Anyway, um, <laughs> fundamental theory of calculus. Math, 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 math. Okay, it's fundamental. All right. Um, I was going over this stuff, and it, it's it's different than previous years that I've taught it. The way that it's actually approaching it, and I actually like it because I didn't do this last year like this, and I don't think I actually did it previous year like this. So I just uh, approach the fundamental theory as just a practical sense, where it's not really necessary. Let f be a function that's continuous on a closed interval from a to b. The function i is defined by i of x is going to be from a to x over that of f of t dt. Has properties as continuous a to b and differentiable on a to b, moreover. So the derivative, right, i prime of x is equal to the derivative d dx of the integral should give me just f of x. So there is a proof to go along with this. It, it's complicated and it uses um, upper bounds and lower bounds and all the other stuff. So what we're only going to be applying to this is the upper bound. The lower bound actually cancels out because of it. So the upper bound is the piece that I'm always going to be looking for whenever I'm actually using fundamental theory of calculus here. So if you notice, it goes, it starts off, I have a function in terms of t, right? And I'm taking an integration in the terms of dt, right? So, but it just becomes a function f of x, where this gets into there, right? All right, for all x in that interval. All right, this one's easy. I'm gonna verify it. So we have the derivative of an integration. So using the upper bound, this is gonna turn into just, go ahead and put that in. All right? Same thing goes for the other one. Derivative of the integration, upper bound. So it's going to be x to the third minus 1 over 2x squared plus x plus 1. So we always going to use the upper bound? Upper bound, yeah. Because the lower bound goes away. Using, we could actually do the limit process for an integration and it's oh it's ugly it really is i tried going over it to see if i could actually like try to make it have more sense just trust me on this use the upper bound always the upper bound to try and do this okay this one will be ah there we go okay so now this one right here is different what makes this one different? Not yeah, it's not just x, there we go. So upper bound's gonna be that thing, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have to chain rule on this. So I'm gonna say that u is gonna be three x squared plus one. Du is gonna be six x, and that's gonna be dx, right? And so when I do this, I'm actually getting to this point right here. This is the part that actually is probably going to mess you guys up. Because when I'm doing this, I'm substituting this out. So I have that du dx is 6x. So I could substitute a u in, right? 
Yes? And so it would turn into the square root of e to the u plus u, right? Yeah, and so this is going to be, and this is going to be d u. But now I'm changing it in terms of x. So this is going to be a du dx when I'm actually getting this going here. So it's this times the derivative, which is here. Okay, the du dx. So it's going to now go to my original u. So the du, right? So I did all this. I just plugged in u's, right? I plug in u's, and then I have a du dx, which is going to be this. Now it's going to be square root of e to the, what is u supposed to be? So 3x squared plus 1 plus 3x squared plus 1 times 6x. And this is using the fundamental theory of calculus. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I did have it there. Sorry. My, my board's not working with me today. This is not too bad, right? <coughs> did I confuse the crap out of you? Anyone I confuse the crap out of? No? Anyone hate me at this current moment? Okay, put all your hands down. Okay, but yeah. <laughs> It plays better on the video, so okay. Anyway, okay, so we're all right now, right? Okay, so now, what's different about this? It's on the lower bound. Is there a way to actually change this to be in the upper bound? Make it negative, right? So I could do that. So it would be a. So it would be a. Uh, let's see a negative d dx of 5x cubed and that's going to be t4 plus 1 to the 1 third d t are we okay so what do i do now Okay, why don't you tell me what that is? Thank you. All right, so u is what? <coughs> what? U is what? Okay, because what are we trying to get in terms of? X, and right now I have T's, right? So I'm changing the whole thing. So this is going to be my DU. I'm telling you, my board's hating me this morning. DU is equal to 3X squared DX. So d u d x is 3 x squared. Yeah? Okay, so I have my d d x and my integration. So that's now going to turn into, let me see, that's going to be parentheses u 4 plus 1 to the 1 third, right? Yeah. And then it's going to be my du dx. And then from there, I'm going to substitute that in, right? So my u is now what? What is my u supposed to be? The upper bound. Oh, crap. I forgot the negative right here. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Catching that. All right. So it's going to be a negative. So it's going to become u to the. No, not u. I'm sorry. X. X to the what? 12 plus 1. One third times 3x squared. So I should get just a negative 3x squared, parentheses, x12 plus 1 to the 1 third. And this is going to be my f of x. Not bad or like, no? Okay. Uh, fundamental theory of calculus part two, let f be a function that is continuous on a closed interval a to b. If f is any antiderivative of f on a to b, then we could actually do my uh, upper bound minus lower bound. So the derivative of f of x is equal to just f of x. Then from a to b, f of x dx, it's going to be f of b minus f of a. Just integrate f. There we go. All right, let's do this first one. First one, what happens when I take the integration? What do I do with the exponents? Add one and then divide by that number. So this is going to give me x to the third over 3 from negative 2 to 1, right? Okay, do the math. It's going to be see one third minus what's that going to be uh, negative eight thirds which is going to give me nine thirds Yes, no, maybe. Yes, no, maybe. If you have questions, please speak up. Please, please, please. Next one. So, what is the integration of cosine? So, it's going to be the sine of x from 0 pi over 6. Okay, so what is sine at pi over 6? Which one's bigger? Think about pi over 6. Where's pi over 6 on the unit circle? <coughs> Which one's bigger? Is the x value bigger or the y value? So is it down here or is it up here? No, it's like... It's down, right? Yeah. So that means that the y value is smaller, right? Oh, okay. So think of it like that. So wherever it's located, if you picture it, you know, if it, it's down closer, that's going to be smaller. Okay, so that means it's going to be 1 half minus... What is sine at zero? My answer is? <laughs> hmm? What type of problems that look like? Is it a sine or cosine? Cosine? 
Can we figure it out? <laughs> Watch. There is a way to actually figure it out. So, let me see. One over... Plus or minus? Minus. Minus x squared. Okay. That's how you solve it. No, seriously, this is how we're actually getting this all the time. So from here, we know that we're going to have a couple things. If I'm talking about this right here, there's my theta. So in a unit circle, what is the radius always? One. And this is going to be x squared, right? And this is 1 squared, right? Because these are right triangles, aren't they? So I have, let's see, uh, this is going to be y squared. Okay, so from there, I know I could actually find out a couple things. So can I try to solve for one of them? Let's solve for the y. So from here, that could be here over here, right? Okay, eh, maybe. So let's go cosine. But I know it's going to be x squared plus y squared equals 1. And I know that I could actually use this to try and figure it out. So it's going to be 1, one minus x squared is equal to y squared. y is equal to plus or minus square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay. So I could actually replace this with... This value right here. So it's a plus or minus depending on where it's going to end up at. Okay, and so from the angle, from the angle which is going to be here theta, uh, how would I actually get this over this? Reciprocal of sine, right? So reciprocal of sine, so it'd be. So I know that it would be sine. What's the reciprocal of sine? Secant? Yeah. Cosecant? Which is it? Cosecant. Okay, so it's going to be CSC theta is equal to 1 over... Yeah, there we go. So it's going to be, I'm going to do the positive here. 1 minus x squared on that. And then I could actually use that and say that, okay, theta is equal to arc sine or arc secant of 1 over That's where those things come from. You, you have to build it from a right triangle. So they, they do come from somewhere. They're not just some random thing where we could actually go through and, you know, try to replace stuff with. We are going to end up using it, though. But because we have that, we can do a substitute off of it, right? So we can. So let's go back to what we have here. So remember when I gave you those flashcards? Yes. Flashcards, right? Yeah. Okay, given the flashcards, what is this one going to end up being? I have mine right here. This one's arc sign. <laughs> arc sine of x from 
zero, or add three over two. No, maybe, possibly. Remember flashcards. Does everyone have a case of the Mondays? I know. Is, it, is that what it is? After Thanksgiving, everyone's got like the itis? No? Okay. Anyway. So, from here, from there to there, what do we get? So, rad 3 over 2. Okay, where is, where is sine rad 3 over 2? Pi over 3. Minus, where is sine 0? Did I just screw up everyone here? No. All right. What about this one right here? 1 over x. What's the integration of 1 over x? So we have ln x from. So it's going to be an ln 2 minus ln 1. But what is ln 1? 0. 0. So it's just going to be. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to leave the rest of this till tomorrow. Actually, no, I think I could do this one still. Area under the graph. Oh, yeah, we could do that one. Area under the graph from here to here. So let's rewrite this as an integral. So as an integral, this would be. There you go. What's a great integration of e to the x? E to the x. Okay, so it's going to be e to the x from negative 1 to 1, which is going to give me e, right, to the first minus e to the negative 1, which is e to the first minus 1 over e to the first. Multiply top and bottom by e to e to the first, right? Yeah. So it's going to be e squared yeah. minus 1 over e to the first. OK. Y'all are zoning out way too much on me. Like, there's not really much. That guy's good, though. All right, like and subscribe. Right.